Hi, this is um, Freddie from IFM. Um, I would just like to talk about and show you guys how to set up the um, Ethercat system with our Smart Safe PLC. Now, this tutorial will basically be a short overview of just getting a, a safety um, input and having a safety output on a contact or out. So basically, if you look at the screen, this is what we have. Um, so I've got a safety PLC with me. In this case, I haven't got any ASI connected at all, um, just to show you the concept of Ethercat. And with that, I've got an Ethercat connection to uh, Ethercat uh, coupler module. And from there, I've got uh, an Ethercat input module, safety input module, four channel, and a four channel safety output module on that. So I'll go through step-by-step -step on codices, how to log into the PLC, how to start a project, and also how to get the Ethercat system running. So first of all, um, you would need to have codices without profile. And on codices without profile, you will need to make sure that you have the SmartSafe PLC installed um, package. From there, it'll open up codices. It's a good idea to um, in parallel run with the uh, web interface. So I'm currently logged into the web interface of the module um, of the ASI master. So in there we can see all um, bits and pieces and especially getting the IP address from there as well um, in that sense. So yeah, we're going to start a new project. Make sure you click on the uh, smart PLC and let's call this our test ethercat. So I'm not sure how far you, your knowledge um, spread on uh, the PLC itself. So basically, in short, um, this is your uh, standard PLC, and that'll be your safety PLC in this case. So it's a really uh, easy system to add your Ethercat. So on Ethercat, you'll just basically go and uh, right-click on your main PLC and say Add Device, and it will come up with some different fuel buses. In there. So there we have an Ethercat master, so just add an Ethercat master on there. So you'll notice that it adds it at the very bottom of your device tree on your non-safe PLC. So from there you would have to select um, which port, because obviously this controller has got port X3 and, and X8 on there, um, on the unit itself. So with this in mind, um, we will have to be online with the PLC. So first of all, Double click on your top device over there. And now we'll have to go online with the non-safe PLC in this uh, instance. So we scan, we find our safety PLC. It says safe line, but now I'm connecting to the non-safe side of my PLC. And also I need to do the same for my safety PLC. So once you get online with your safety PLC, it's going to ask you to insert the serial number required. So that's just to verify the safety PLC and to verify that your device is licensed with codices as well. So an easy way to do it is to um, just go to the web interface, go to your PLC icon information and just highlight copy paste. It's an easier way instead of just reading um, that on the side of the module which it is located in that case. So after adding that, you'll see that your device will be online. So now I'll show you, um, if you go to your Ethercat master, you'll have to decide um, which port this will be under. So in my case, I've got one of the older masters connected. So the new device if you have a newer device, it'll have X3 and X8, which is a small extra port we've added um, in the left side corner on the device itself, which on this presentation you can see, it's that that's port X8 and that's port X3. And there. So in this case, you have to browse, it's, it should scan the Mac ID. So in this case, it will come up with Ethernet 01. So Ethernet 01 is always port X3, Ethernet 01 will be your uh, port X8. So in this case, I've only got the one. So once you connect that, it basically makes the port X3 an Ethercat master um, system. So a very important note is to uh, click on the seat and options over here and make sure you tick 
a box that says automatic restart slaves because otherwise if you if you lose your ethercat comms due to network faults or um, anything like that it could be a problem re-establishing communication from that sense in there so that should do it for the ethercat side so of course you need to install the uh, the esi files for the ethercat so once you downloaded those or got it from your ifm representative it's really easy you go to tools device uh, repository so from there you can click on um, install so you can click on uh, install and you can obviously go and find your uh, ESI files which I've installed the ESI files it will come up um, in there as well so once you have it it's really easy right click there and say add device and we go to the ethercat coupler unit which is the main unit uh, Double click on that, and you'll see it'll add the Ethercat coupler over there. So click on the Ethercat coupler. Now we have to add the slaves. So like I mentioned, we've only got the two slaves uh, present. That'll be the um, uh, the safety input channel, which is located. You've got to have it in sequence. So Ethercat channel, safety input. So I would like you to notice once you add it, you can see that it adds it in the safety world as well, as well as the non-safe world. So I'll add the second one, which is the output module. And you'll see it'll add automatically in that section as well. So now for this case, you don't need to do anything else on your non-safe PLC. So for the time being, I'm just going to minimize a little bit there so we can see. So... And even if I double click on my safety input module, there's a couple of uh, addresses and connection IDs. That's important, which I'll explain in a second. And also it automatically name your channels, channel input channel one, two, three, and four. That'll be exactly the same for the outputs. It'll automatically give you some variables for that as well. So it's very important um, to know how to set up your Ethercat system. Because in this case, you have got uh, automatic addressing, so auto config with the master. So that means it just gives the first uh, device in your device tree address number one, and every device after that will be minus one uh, to be connected. So in this case, it'll be uh, from anything from zero, which will be our one minus one minus two minus three. But you have to remember that this is my first connection on that device and my second connection on that device. So that's why it's important to make sure that your first device over here has got a FSOE address number one and connection ID number one. So this has got nothing to do with my Ethercat addressing. This is my module addressing from my Ethercat slave on there. So if I double click on the second one, I'll have to make sure that this one is FSOE address number two and device ID number two, connection ID. It's important, so if you've got multiples, you've got to change all of that. Otherwise, it will not communicate to the slave. So let's quickly set up a system. So basically, in, in the event that you have multiples of these, you have to have an FSOE master block for each one of these. That's why when you add multiples, you have to give a unique name to each individual unit. In this case, we're lucky, we just use the part number. So of course, if you add another one, they will be an underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, or anything you like. So from there, it's really easy. So we'll just add a, um, so we'll insert an empty box. And you'll find that specific block we need under the, uh, safety IO driver for FSOE so I'll have to add one of those and it's very important to make this name exactly the same as this name so I have to make that EL1904 because that'll automatically call that um, slave to be active in that case I'll have to make the inbound traffic to and the outbound traffic, in and out, both two. In this case, we don't need to put a reset on there unless for some reason the project requires to, but in our case, we just put a 
true in there. So that means every time it loses connection, it'll automatically just restart itself, which is what you actually basically want. So now I have to do exactly the same for the other EtherCAT module in there. Insert. It's easy, you can just maybe copy paste if you want and change that to uh, EL. And it already showed you that you already use that. There's only this one available. And that should do it for now. So now, of course, we can just add a safety function block just to show you that that works. Um, insert function block. In this case, I've just got an e-stop on channel one and channel two. So of course we can keep this two. And I'll have input channel one and input channel two. Another way to find these variables is to click on here and you'll find the same. Uh, on global variables, logical IOs, there you have it. Now the discrepancy time is really important depending on what type of switch you use and also depending on the safety rating. So in our case, 100 milliseconds should be sufficient because it's basically forced control which you want out of it. So to add a uh, output, it's easy. You can just drag and drop a assignment or right click add assignment. So output channel one, I've got a contact to write onto and that should do it for now. So I don't know if in the previous videos this was explained, but in this case, we have a bolded application over there. So if it's bolded, that means these login buttons or even these buttons would be appropriate to the bolded application. In that case, we download, it's always good to download your non-safe PLC first just to make sure that all of your non-safe IOs like your EtherCAD and everything gets established and running, which will make your life a lot easier. And every time after you do the download, of course, we need to start the PLC and everything looks good. So in this case, don't worry about my X port X8 not being active because like I mentioned, I've got an older hardware version, although the software is updated and it doesn't have a port X8 um, located on it. So that won't cause any problems. So it's important to make sure that your EtherCAD is all running and all your modules is running as well, which is what we want. And now if you go in there, it'll tell you um, EtherCAD addressing and everything like that. So now we need to do exactly the same with my safety PLC. So remember the bolded application, I need to bold this one. So I need to make it active. So set active. You notice that is not active anymore. This one is active. So now I can go either login or just login over there. This just explains that you're working with a safety system and you can click yes. You don't have to put a password. If you put a password, you've got to remember your password, but it doesn't need a password to download. In that case, I can start the PLC. And now if I monitor my blocks, you will see that your EtherCAT master for that is for us. Input module is happy and also the output module is also happy. And you'll see my two inputs, so I'm just going to press my e-stop. And you'll see that'll fall out and my output will go off. Once they rectify it, it goes back on. Of course, if you need to make this a safety system, you'll have to add an e-stop block in here if this is an e-stop. So in that case, um, I'll just drop, drop and drag an e-stop in here, um, which will make it easier. Um, in that sense. So it's important to, once you've done all your uh, commissioning and your testing to download the boot application, make sure that you are bolded on this application and create a boot application. So after you download your boot application, then your system should be all good and running. Thank you. That's all for now. IFM. Close to you.